start my lectures with a song. But today I am making an exception because I lost my brother Tyre Nichols. He was indiscriminately killed on January 7th by a group of five Chicago police officers. Just a few meters away from his home, he was calling out for his mother as he was being beaten. I do not understand how people like the police meant to bring peace to our neighborhoods and cities can do something as vile as committing murder like this. Rest in peace, my brother. Today, we will be reviewing the universal law of gravitation. So let's start with a 42 kilogram man who is standing on the earth. Let's try to find the earth's gravitational pull on him and his gravitational pull on earth. What is the earth's gravitational pull on him? Well, that's simple. It's just mg. fg is equal to mg. And here, we know that I know that G is 9.8, but for convenience's purposes, we will say that G is approximately negative 10 meters per second squared. So now, FG is equal to MG. This becomes very simple. This is equal to 42 times our gravitational constant, minus 10. And this leaves us with minus 420 newtons, or you could say 420 newtons, but you would need to specify the direction, and that direction is down. All right. So now, let's try to find FG man. And hopefully, they will be exactly the same, although they might not, uh, FG man might be a little bigger considering that we use g is minus 10 meters per second squared instead of minus 9.8 meters per second squared all right so what is fg exerted by the man well in this case we don't really know the gravitational acceleration of uh, this man but instead we can use newton's universal law of gravitation which suggests FG is equal to G times the bigger mass times the smaller mass over the distance uh, between the center of the two squared. So now the distance between the center of the two is basically the radius of the earth because you could say that this is the center of the man, but his height doesn't really make any difference in comparison to the colossal earth. So that means that this distance is about 6.37 times 10 to the 6th. So now, that means that we have G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times big M, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, times little m, which we'll just say is 42, and we divide that by r squared, which is 6.37 times 10 to the sixth whole squared. So now, what is this going to give us? Well, we can separate the powers of 10 from the rest and then work it out from there. So this gives us 6.67 times 5.98 times 42 over 6.37 squared. We can take this 10 to the 6th squared, and 10 to the 6th squared, we know, is 10 to the 12th. So we can insert it here. So we have times 10 to the, what is this? Minus 11. What is this? Positive 24. And then we add in the minus 12. Why minus? Because this 10 to the 6th squared is on the bottom. Okay, so now we have, what is this number? Well, from some calculation, you can deduce that it is approximately 41.28. So, multiplying that 
by 10 to, uh, to the minus 11 plus 24 minus 12. Minus 11 and minus 12 make tw minus 23. And 24 minus 23 is to the first power. 41.28 times 10 to the first is 412.8. And we'll just reveal this a decimal decimal, please. That is our, oh sorry, let's also put some units. Newtons. And we know that the di uh, direction is up. And you can see that it's just a little smaller than our FG Earth. Why? Because we use g equals minus 10, which is larger than the actual value of g, minus 9.8 meters per second squared, which is what caused most of the difference. Now, let's get to the second and arguably harder example. So, now an 82 kilogram man, and let's draw this a little smaller, an 82 kilogram man uh, is performing a standing jump. He goes from crouching to standing up in the regular position as he's jumping, and then to standing up in a heightened position. So he crouches a distance of thir a point 0.3 meters. So that means the difference between his crouching height and his normal height is 0.3 meters. And this gives him a total jump of 0.2 meters. So the question is, what is his acceleration? And what is the acceleration of the Earth because of his jump? Well, this mostly harnesses Newton's third law. But before we do any of that, we can use kinematics equations. So let's call one of these positions, position A, another one of these positions, position B, and the final one of these positions, position C. Now what are the velocities of this man at each of these positions? When he's crouching, he's traveling at a velocity of zero. Uh, and when he is uh, jumping up, this is his initial velocity, but we don't exactly know what it is yet. And for his final velocity, this is at the top of his jump. And if you remember from projectile motion, the top of the uh, jump is where velocity is equal to zero. So we know VA v and VC are both zero. We're trying to find VB. So now we can use VF squared and VI squared plus 2AD, where our D is this distance traveled in between position B and position C. So that means that we have VC squared is equal to VB squared plus 2 times, what is our acceleration here? Well, that would be minus 10 for G. And then our D would be 0.2 meters, as mentioned previously. VC is zero, so VC squared is also zero, meaning that zero is B, VB squared plus, what is two times minus 10? Minus 20, minus 20 times one fifth is minus four. So VB squared is four and VB is two. So now we know what VB is now, what we're going to do, we're going to find the acceleration of the man, which is what we need to do. So, find the acceleration of the man, what we do is use the same kinematics equation again. And let me just erase a little bit of this because we're already done with this problem. So, vf squared 
in, in this case, VF is going to be VB is equal to VA squared plus 2AD is this distance, 0.3 meters. So now we have VB squared, so that's 4, is equal to VA squared, 0, plus 2A, which is a mystery, and A here, for clarification, is its acceleration uh, when jumping off the ground. 100.3. So this ultimately ends up with A is equal to 4 over 0.6 or 20 over 3, which results in approximately 6.6 uh, meters per second squared of acceleration. So now, we know what the acceleration of the man is. But what about the acceleration of the Earth? How are we going to find that? Well, for that, we need to draw a free body diagram. So let's draw one right over here. So we have the, that's not a very good looking Earth. Let's just draw part of the Earth. So we have the Earth, and then we have our, oh, sorry. So we have the earth right here, and then we have our man. So this man, as we saw in the previous problem, can attract the earth with a very minimal acceleration. So this is Fg by the man. Then there's Fg by the earth. And then we have the force exerted by the man is the force that he exerts on the earth from uh, jumping onto the, uh, off the ground. Uh, when he crouches and then jumps off, that's when all the force is applied. So that is F jump. And then this is the for a force of the earth's response, which pushes him up, which is basically the meaning of FAB is equal to minus FBA. In this case, it's F man earth is equal to minus F earth man. So this is the force of the earth's response, which has to be equivalent uh, in magnitude, but as you can see, opposite in direction. So now, what is Fg of the earth? Well, pretty simple to find. Let me close this one and open this one back up. Fg of the earth is simple to find as it's basically just mg. So that is going to be 82 times our g of minus 10 minus 820 newtons. And we, can, and we know from the first problem that Fg man is going to be the same thing, but obviously opposite in direction. So that's why the minus sign is no longer there. And now, that means that all we have to do is find F jump and F response. Why? Because the thing is, for the Earth, uh, for the acceleration of the Earth, what we need to do to find it is take the net force uh, that is being experienced by the Earth, divided it by M, stemming from sigma F is MA, within second law. So, uh, finding the net force uh, on the Earth is as simple as finding F G by uh, F. Uh, uh, sorry, F jump minus F G man. So, what is the force of F jump? Well, we can find that by taking F, setting it. Uh, we can find that by saying that sigma F equal to m g plus m a that gives us uh, m is 82 and our g is 10 plus our m is 82 again and our a is 6.6 .6. if you don't remember this is what we got from way back earlier and so that gives us 82 times 16.6 .6, which is approximately Oh yeah, about 1367, exactly 1366 and stuff, but 
Uh, let's just round that all the way up to 1367 newtons. So now, this all comes to an end because we know F jump. So, A earth, which is sigma F over M, is simply F jump minus F G man over M. So, that is 1367 minus 820 divided by 5.98, I'm sorry I had to, times 10 to the 24th. And so, this leads to an acceleration of 9.1 times 10 to the minus 23 meters per second squared. So, now, we found the acceleration of the Earth and the acceleration of the man. So, we're, we're going to write them in bigger letters up here. And, in fact, we're not just going to write them in bigger letters. We're also going to write them in red. We know that A, man, is equal to 6.6 .6 meters per second squared. And we know... That A of Earth was 9.14 meters per second squared. No, 9.14 times 10 to the minus 23. So that means there were 22 zeros before the 9.14 meters per second squared. That's a very small acceleration because you know you need to draw 24, uh, 22 zeros. And then 914, etc. But there's still an acceleration experienced by the Earth during this. And rest in peace, my brother Tyre Nichols. Saborno Isaac Bari, who is known as the god of mathematics, became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.